Hi, this is Vicki Goforth Parnell, and I have come to share another dream from the Lord Jesus Christ, who is my Lord, my Savior, my God, my everything, as He should be yours too. I ask that you take this to Jesus Christ in prayer as we're instructed, and try and test and discern everything. Afterwards, I have a short, a, a few, few short words about the blood of Jesus Christ. The Lord has asked me to bring this up again. So, Lord willing, we will get this done. Let's pray. I'm just going to say this weighs heavy on my heart. Let's pray. We have to warn. If we're given something to warn, we have to warn. I'm not going to be one of these people that will not warn. No matter if it means people walking away. People unwilling to try and test to see if what we're saying is true or not. And I'm saying that in general as all people warning even brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Because we've always been taught this way. Because this is how it's been for years. This is... And the church has been filled with deception for many, many years. Let's pray. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. For it's only through Jesus Christ that that relationship could be restored. And it's only through Jesus Christ, through his blood, that I can approach your throne of grace and mercy. Because when he died on the cross and I received him, accepted him into my heart as Lord and Savior, I now was granted access into your throne room of grace again. The holies of holy. That's what it was called before. Not the most holy place. The holy of holies. Where you are God. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to come. Lord, I give you praise. Jesus Christ, I ask that you answer this prayer. As John 14, 13 and 14 says. That whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I will do. So that Father will be glorified. And whatsoever I shall ask in prayer, you will do. When I ask it in your name. And again, that when you search all that out. Father, you have shown me. It's when you're living an obedient and humble life, being walking as we're called to do, picking up our cross daily, and doing all the Word of God tells us with your help. We can't do it alone. We're to die daily. We're to crucify this flesh daily. And while I tell the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm taking a baseball bat to it today, and I'm beating it down in Jesus Christ's name. So my spirit man and my soul can rise up above in Jesus Christ's name, with your help. The Holy Spirit, don't let me pray, speak, or say anything that's not from God's heaven, where He abides, that's not from Jesus Christ, Father God, or sweet Holy Spirit. Shut me up, Holy Spirit. I place myself in your hands, and whatever you have to do, because I will not speak knowingly and offend or hurt somebody. Nor am I going to speak a lie. When I have information lord it's after you gave me the information to back it up and most people do not want to hear the truth lord so i ask that you would open up eyes and ears of your children to the truth of things that's going on to the truth lord so that they're not deceived so many by choice choose to walk back into deception i don't want to see this anymore i like the way it used to be father god help us I choose not to compromise. I choose not to be deceived. I choose not to have to fall repeatedly. Your word says in Jude 24, to him who is able to keep you from falling. But if we do fall, we have an advocate with the Savior. Proverbs 26, Proverbs, I think it's 26, Proverbs, it says, a just man falleth seven times and gets back up. That means there's times that the righteous, the just, is the righteous, the elect. The righteous, the just, will fall. But they don't stay down. We get back up with the help of Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit. If we stay down, it's by our choice. So, Father God, help us to be obedient, to be servants, to love unconditionally. Lord, we're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to love one another and forgive we're supposed to bless those that curse us and spitefully use us. Not just those that are our friends. Not just those that are our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. So Father God, I ask again that this be placed under the barrier of stealth and invisibility. Until such a time as you say otherwise. 
meaning under the shadow of your wings, hidden from the enemy until such a time. Because if Jesus Christ can walk through the crowd of angry people that wanted to stone him or to throw him off a cliff, and he just walks through them, a crowd, so you know that he's going to pass them, bustle people, you certainly can hide me and hide this as needed. And Lord, again, I'm, I bring to remembrance, excuse me, Dimitri Dudeman, that one testimony I did listen. I hear a lot of people talk about him, and I know he's had prophetic words and dreams, but Lord, you let me listen to his testimony, and what a testimony. And in that testimony, it stuck with me as I have been where I am here now. He allowed those Bibles. He was smuggling Bibles in Romania. He was in Romania smuggling Bibles. And until the time God allowed them to be caught, they would open up that trunk. And those Bibles would be right there, and they never saw them. That is the power of our God. He makes the invisible things visible, invisible, invisible. You are amazing. That's true power. Not wannabe power like Lucifer, like Satan, like the kingdom of darkness. I give you praise. Now, I also pray and, and I state and command in Jesus Christ's name, standing in the word of God where it says, Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, over all the power. So I command, decree, and declare, you will not cause interference, backlash, retaliation, or such like, directly or indirectly with this video or any other video I have put out or this ministry any pdfs any person reading or talking about it in jesus christ's name in jesus christ's name the, the the supreme authority of all because god is in him and giving him his power the supreme authority of everything inside this firmament in the heavens in the earth and in the sea and hell beneath the firmament god created the firmament it's his he owns it and to live in this firmament, we've been given rules and laws to live by. And when we don't, we receive the just punishment. Lord, help us. Lord Jesus Christ, help us. Help us all. I break all witchcraft. All witchcraft, whatever form they choose to sin, Father God. And I send it back using my shield of faith, which Ephesians six eighteen says is able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. And again, I say making them useless, making them pointless, without effect, ineffective, where they cannot carry out, excuse me, their full potential. And I say full because sometimes you will be allowed. The heads were let down at times, but they still can only do what God allows, what Father God allows. He is in absolute say, and Jesus Christ does the Father's will. I'll stick with them, thank you, because I know the back of the book, the Holy Word of God, and it says we win who have accepted Jesus Christ and made them their His, made Him their Lord, not just saved. That can confess without deception and say Jesus Christ is my Lord. You are everything, Jesus Christ. You have done. As I was looking again, reminded myself of all these scriptures about the blood of Jesus Christ and what it does. I was just humbled again humbled and just so overwhelmed by what you have done for us I give you praise now Lord also every demon spirit that's been sent out in any attack I bind it in the name of Jesus Christ whether it be in technology whether it just be in a form of a witchcraft woohoo garbage that's what it is garbage the only power you have is through deception you do your woohoo wahoo things and summon up a demon and send it out to do it. Not even man enough to do it yourself. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ where we can stand against every foe. The enemy. Like a roaring lion. Like a roaring lion. When we have the lion of Judah with us, I'll stick with Jesus Christ. Thank you. Because Jesus Christ, though he may be a God of love and a mercy and compassion, long-suffering, patient to the point of almost painful. When he steps in, he steps in. And there's nobody that can stop him. Nobody. He is invincible. He is unstoppable. He is all-powerful and all legal authority has been placed in him by Father God over everything. Principalities, powers, angels, 
both fallen and, and the good. And he's given that power to us. But we do everything we do. The power we have is when we ask or do it in Jesus Christ's name. Therein is where the power lies in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus himself, in Jesus himself. And you pointed something out to me today in Revelation 19. Upon your thigh, that is not a naked leg, upon, because you're a priest, so you're not exposing your leg. But written upon your thigh, with most people, you'll state out, that's like a sash or, or a scabbard of a weapon. That's how they would do it on, on a sword or something. It was written, King of kings, Lord, Lord, but, but your name is the word of God. What does that mean? Jesus Christ is a word made into flesh. It does not say the Holy Bible, the Torah, the, the Word of God forever settled in heaven that cannot be compromised or changed in any way. I give you praise for that, Lord. You've been showing me so much. But I laid this dream before you, Lord. I've tried it, tested it, had my son try and test it because of the content, Lord, again, because it is what it is. Your will be done. Now, every demon that sent out an attack, or person with a demon, human agent, witch, warlock, whatever, I bind those demons inside you in Jesus Christ's name. Binding means not binding them to something. I am restraining you from any further attacks in the name of Jesus Christ. According to Matthew 18, 18. Whatsoever you shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth, shall be loosed in heaven. Every fallen angel that's given an order or a commander has been part of this. Directly or indirectly, I bind you too. Any Fallen angel that can be thrown into the abyss, Father God, I ask that you do it. If they can all be thrown in and you take them out at a later time, so be it. Because you said we have all power. I mean, you said all power, that goes for the Nephilim too, who are neither categories, categorized as fallen angel or demon, because they're not a demon until they die. So you are hereby bound too, Nephilim, because I understand now why some of the attacks were getting through on the computer. Nephilim. So I, I went into fasting and praying. What's going on, Father? I bound the demons and I bound the fallen ones. And he said, Nephilim, the kingdom of darkness. So, Lord, I bind them all in the name of Jesus Christ. And I say, you are just and you're righteous. So vengeance is mine. Thus saith the Lord, you take care of it. All forms of evil communication that you have knowledge of God, Father God, directly or indirectly, in all your existence concerning me, this ministry, my family, all who watches this, my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, where I can step in. Those are broken. That the kingdom of darkness is trying to use against us. Broken, reversed, nullified, sent back. Meaning, Proverbs 26, 2. The curse causes shall not come. Do not give it a place to light. I reject it and therefore it goes back to cinder in Jesus Christ's name. Holy Spirit, sweet friend, is there anything else you want me to pray? I pray Ephesians 1, 17-19 over all with ears to hear and eyes to see. I pray it over them, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. That you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And again, this ministry stands on your word. Jesus Christ is your ministry. So it is also an, an Acts 5. Gamaliel told the Pharisees, they told the, the rulers when they had the disciples or apostles, I forget which one, had the apostles, I believe. And they were had them and were going to beat them. And, and he tried to stop them from spreading the word of Jesus Christ and him risen, his resurrection. And Gamaliel said, if these be of God, then you, you're fighting God. You can't stop it. But if these be of man, it shall surely fall. Same here. And I say again, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, let it fall. If I ever get in my own self, I am not perfect. I am ever learning. And when you show me something, unless you have more pieces to add, I'm unmovable. I give you praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give you praise. All right. I ask you take this dream, take everything that's said to Jesus Christ in prayer. I had this dream twice this morning. 
had it at 4.47 a.m. and 7.40 a.m. I started journaling it at 4.47, but then stopped partway because the Lord told me to lay back down, and I dreamed it again. Then I dreamed another dream. And yes, that is possible when the Lord moves upon you to dream. Pray and try and test that too, because I know there's many people who says you, you can't dream on one dream. <laughs> yeah, you can. There's nothing impossible with our God. The only thing our God, Jehovah God, Jesus Christ, cannot do is lie, sin. They cannot sin. Everything else, nothing's impossible with them. This is titled, Before the Seven Ends. And if any of you have followed the dreams and words I've been given, there's something this refers to. Certain devices going off before the seven ends. I had this dream twice. The first, I woke up at 4.47 a.m. I spent time praying, reading the Word of God, praying, discerning this dream. I slept again and woke up again and again at 7.40 a.m. I had this dream. But then another that followed, which was about a very, very cold winter with dirty snow. But that currently is all I can say about it to anyone but you, my lovely Jesus Christ. My dear friend, sweet Holy Spirit, do not allow me to write or share anything that is not from Jesus Christ or God's heavenly abode. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Your word says in John 14, 14, that whatsoever I ask you, Jesus Christ, in your name, you will do it. This is a 2 Corinthians 13, 1 dream. This dream began where I am outside looking up into the sky. I hear these words being spoken. Before the seven ends, O inhabitants of the earth, these things shall transpire. I looked up higher up in the, in the, in the name of Jesus, I bind all hindrances. Sorry about that. I looked up higher up in the sky and I saw an angel totally dressed in white with beautiful white wings, as white as fresh fallen snow. The angel is light brown headed and speaks with a voice that booms like thunder. I'm standing in stunned surprise. The angel boy, excuse me, okay, the angel's voice boomed again. The almighty great God of heaven and earth declares these things must be, must take place before the seven ends. The seven comes to completion. The seven is the time of completion, of all being done, before the holy and righteous Lamb's great day of wrath begins on your world. O oh, inhabitants above and below the earth, the seas, and the heaven above. The seven, the time of completion, when one cycle, one season, one day, is completed before a new begins. Just as the great God of heaven created all, then rested on the seventh day. The seventh, the seven, the sign all is completed. These three significant things that trigger each other are to be. The rogue mushroom type devices hidden inside the country of the wicked evil Babylon this judgment from the courts of heaven is fair and just. The sentence and verdict stand. For Babylon as a whole has failed to return by repentance to the God of all creation. Through his son, Jesus Christ, the Lion of Judah and Lord of all. The three days of darkness as foretold in the Holy Scripture of truth of the plagues returning as they have already done before in times past but they shall come forth the same yet different and so they have up to this point of the three days of darkness to come finally the return of the saving king jesus christ the heavenly bridegroom for his spotless white bride those who made themselves ready and are waiting for his arrival excuse me the angel finished speaking, and as he is flying, I felt strongly compelled to ask, Holy angel of God, 
If these three events are all that's holding back the great day of the Lord, then where are we physically at in Father God's timeline? The angel of God stopped midair and replied, Daughter of faith, of grace and of mercy. You are right here, he said. And as soon as he spake those words, the scene changed before my eyes. The angel is gone, and now I am looking at what looks like a gigantic movie theater screen hanging in the air. It's blank. Then suddenly, a picture appeared and begins playing like a movie. I saw a dark, uh, excuse me, a darkened room with a long, darkened figure sitting in a large, straight back chair. His arms are on the armrest, but the room is very dark. I heard him speak in a low tone of a voice that sounded lethal. Tell them it's a go. It's time. I saw no one else in the room, but the screen divided into two pictures. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord, for water. Sorry about that. But the screen divided into two pictures. The man in the dark was on the left. The new picture on the right was dark. Then the scene lit up. It is a massive computer system. I see over it in a white bubble these words. AI computer. There are wires leading out from the computer in every direction possible. But some of them light up with activity in the form of lights traveling through the wires. I heard what I can only describe as a response from the AI computer inside the man's mind. And it said... It's done. Message sent without any visible way of tracing the source. Good, the man replied out loud and began laughing a horrible laugh. The scene on the right on the theater type screen disappeared. With the man in the huge straight back chair still laughing in the dark. Suddenly a spotlight shined down upon him and I saw his face. It's Antichrist, the man of sin. Then the screen goes blank. I looked around for just a moment because the screen had gone dark. Suddenly I heard sounds as if, I, if another movie was beginning, so I focused on the movie type screen once again. Another scene played out before my eyes of another darkened room. Instead of just one lone figure, there are several with each dressed in a dark hooded cloak. There are candles sitting on the table and the room had the appearance of great evil. One of the robe figures is speaking. The message has been sent already by the chosen one, the chosen son of the light bearer, directly to our operatives in DC. They are moving their people into position as we speak. The Chosen One of the Dark Lords has given them the set date. What they don't realize is it gives us just enough time for our operatives hidden inside the United States to return to where they have hidden the four briefcase devices we ordered made in addition to the original eight. They each had to have enough time to return because we couldn't chance their faces being seen and possibly have them connected to the devices at a later time. These operatives have been hidden for years. Their loyalty unquestioned. They need their covers remained intact for the coming invasion. Another one spoke up and said, If all goes as planned, it doesn't look like there will be anything to be thankful for or to celebrate this year. For the people of the no longer United States, he finished. There were several of them that snickered and laughed, finding this statement amusing. The road man who had originally spoken said quickly, Notify our four remaining operatives. It's a go. 
give them the timeline of when each are to go off in the directions we sent to the U to the U.S. leaders and military loyal to us, to our dark lords and their chosen son. They already know in advance from their original orders at what time and where to insert these last ones that we ordered as an extra guarantee. Excuse me. I'm about to pray. Lord, Jesus Christ's name, you're not going to bite me. Critters. As I'm watching, I saw another white bubble with black writing that said, Secret Hidden Society Meeting. Another spoke up, and to my surprise, although still evil, the voice sounded as female. We have been guaranteed by the, we have been guaranteed by those loyal to the Dark Lords and to us in Washington that once the first two are detonated, one before the other in New York, they shall cause so much chaotic confusion that they shall hinder the searches for the other devices, except for the one in DC that currently has been chosen not to be detonated, even if they are delayed in recovering it. That's good, Clarice, the man who had spoken first replied. Thank you, Stuart, she replied in a voice of efficiency. The dark hooded man I now know, whose name Stuart, began speaking again. Notify our four operatives it's time. It's a go. This will give them enough time to arrive, to detonate the devices, and in the, mi in the midst of the shock and horror, they shall easily be able to return before they lock down the states. The airports, commercial and non-commercial, shall be locked down first. Each are to stay with the original plan and drive the distance unless compromised. Then they are to seek alternative means, or if capture is imminent, to terminate their lives if they become compromised in any way. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Suddenly, the scene before me changed, and the screen was now divided into four separate pictures. Two on top and two on the bottom of four separate different scenes. On each scene, there was a hand holding a cell phone. Though I could tell they are different people because of their different shades of skin tone, each cell phone, though different in their shape and appearance, had a notification sound going off. Like a short tune I couldn't identify. Now, I didn't write it, but they were exactly the same. It's the same tune notification going off for all four. All four almost simultaneously looked at their messages because the sound stopped as they did. The message displayed read as follows. Trip is a go. Follow the pre-planned route and instructions. That was all that the message said. I could only see the chest down of each of the four individuals who appeared to be all male by their build. There are two of tan skin, one of dark, almost black, and the other a light olive, which is fair skinned, which has a light look of warm pigmentation in it, and not the rose colored pigmentation of some other light olive colored skin, like one person in particular I know of. I watch as each reached into their pants pocket and pulled out a set of car keys. Each turned as if walking when the scene froze before me. Wait, I cried out. Please let me see more. Let me see their faces so I can give warning. The theater-type movie screen stood frozen in place, and there again in the sky was a light, brown-haired angel. He spoke these words. Your question was, where were you physically at in the in the God of heaven, creator of all, just, pure, and holy's timeline. This is where you are, at daughter of faith, grace of grace and of mercy, he said, as he pointed to the screen where the four men with their keys in hand had been begin walking. And it's before the seven ends, he said, and then I woke. I have prayed over this dream, discerned, confirmed it. Then I begin seeking and asking, should it be shared? 
I received yes, and then I asked my son to pray in Jesus Christ's name. He received also the same answers. This is why I'm sharing it today. Here are the verses. Isaiah 14, 4 through 6, 24 and 27. Jeremiah 7, 19. Jeremiah 12, 12. Zephaniah 3, 1 through 8. 2 Corinthians 13, 1. John 14, 14. 1 Peter 4, 7, 5, 4. Jeremiah 28, 24. Proverbs 15, 3. Jeremiah 51, 6. Psalms 44, 21. Romans 2, 16. Daniel 9, 21. Revelation 14, 6. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 through 18. 1 John 2, 28. Luke 12, 2. Revelation 18, 4 through 6, verse 10. Jeremiah 23, 28 through 29. Ephesians 4, 11 through 15. Now I ask you to take this to prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Try it. Test it. Pray about it. Try and test me. Test the spirit inside me. Test the fruits. Do all you're called to do. And listen to what Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ tells you. It says in John 10, verse 4, 5, 14, and 27. It's all referring to the same thing. The sheep know my voice and know that they will not follow. John 14, 3 says, He knows us by name. 27 says, We hear His voice and know Him. We won't follow another. That's what is a promise from our shepherd to his sheep. That's what the Word of God says. Hallelujah. Now, I'm, I'm not one to watch anything. But I saw something on a title. I'm not going to say what it is because I'm not going to point anything out. But it was a reference to the blood of Jesus Christ. And in my spirit it grieved me. Because the blood of Jesus Christ is more than just salvation. And many people don't believe that. They, the blood of Jesus is precious. But it is part of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to go through a few things of what the blood of Jesus Christ does according to scripture. And then I'm going to talk about it for a moment. First off, let it be known. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Head of the body. Every person who accepts Jesus Christ into the heart is a member of the body. We're part of the body. So His blood flows through all of us. What does blood do in our physical bodies? Besides pulling life, running life through our body, life is in the blood. Leviticus 17.11, I believe there it is. I wrote it down this time. Yes, life is in the blood. Leviticus 17.11, not the flesh. Life is in the blood. It's connected to the spirit. The heart pumps the blood everywhere, physical and spiritual, connected. Because when God breathed into us, we became a living soul, spirit and soul. Different than any other his, uh, of the, his, any of his other creation. So, just so you know, it talks about the body of Christ, Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. We're all part of the body of Christ. Brothers and sisters, we're all part of the body of Christ. Jesus Christ is the head of the body of the church. Colossians 1.18-20. Ephesians 5.23-23. Romans 12.5. 1 Corinthians 12, 12-7. There's many members in one body. We being many are one body in Christ. Romans 12.3-5. And Ephesians 4 calls it out. One body. One spirit, all through that, Ephesians 4 talks about. There's only one body and one Holy Spirit, one spirit. That's why there's only one anointing, but you can have different different portions. Or in that anointing, you're given different gifts. Because the Holy Spirit gives gifts. You know, some evangelists, some teachers, some prophets, some, you know, different gifts. One anointing. 
So when somebody says they pass down a mantle, they're passing down the Holy Spirit, meaning they have received, if it's from God, it's just like with that symbolic, passing a mantle is considered symbolic because when Elijah was taken up, he dropped his mantle. Elisha picked it up, who had prayed for a double portion. If I see you leave, I want a double portion. He saw Elijah taken up, so he got a double portion of that same anointing, the Holy Spirit. So that's why passing a mantle. But you can't pass somebody's anointing. The anointing is the Holy Spirit. And then you get your portion, whatever. And that portion can grow when you go deeper in the Lord. And you walk in faith and become obedient. But it's gifts that's given also. But pray about that. That's a different subject. All right. For people that says the blood of Jesus cannot protect, they cannot do all these other things. Here's just a quick little thing. Just a few I picked up. The blood of Jesus Christ does this. Cleanses, washes us. 1 John 1, 17. Revelation 1, 5. And you're going to have to look these up unless the Lord tells me. It gives us freedom. Forgives. Colossians 2, 13-14. Galatians 5, 1. And Hebrews 9.22 tells us there's no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. It took the blood of Jesus Christ so we could be forgiven. Forgiven, excuse me. The blood of Jesus gives us redemption. Redemption. We're bought. We're paid for. He took our place. He's a substitute. Ephesians 1.7. 1 Corinthians 6.20. Revelation 1.5. 1 Peter 1.18-19. 1, Cleans our conscience. Gives us the mind of Christ. But it cleans our conscience. Hebrews 9, 12-14. And again, Hebrews 10, 22. This is in the KJV. How it's written in the KJV. Sanctifies us. Hebrews 13, 12. We are made overcomers. Overcomer means conqueror. Revelation 12, 11, we are made more than over. We are made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Overcomers, that's in every To overcome, you have to, to be an overcomer, you have to overcome something, conquer it. And when this is in warfare, it's going to be more than just, it's a blood covering. It talks about sprinkling us with the blood. That's protection. The blood of Jesus ransoms us, rescued from a sinful life. 1 Peter 1, 18-19. Justifies us. Romans 3, 24-25. Romans 5, 9. Allows us to enter the Holy of Holies in heaven. I think it calls most holy place now. Where God is. Hebrews 10, 19-20. Ephesians 2, 13. Now, now there's other verses that talk about Jesus Christ. These are the ones that mentions the blood that I pulled up. His blood brought peace. Colossians 1, 20. Paid our debt, Hebrews 9.28. Saves us from God's condemnation, Romans 5.9. Makes us holy, Hebrews 13.12. Gave us a new covenant, Luke 22.20, 20, Hebrews 10.9. And it also... Oh, did I write that down? Saves us from His wrath. The blood of Jesus saves us from God's wrath. Romans 5, 9. The shed, okay. So understand, the blood does more than just redeem us. There's also because he shed his blood, there's healing for us. But it says by his stripes we are healed. And we know his, the stripes brought forth blood. That's Isaiah 53, 5. Okay, if we're the body of Christ, then his blood flows through us. In our physical bodies, our blood is made to fight against disease and protects our bodies in many ways. Do a little brief study on it. White blood cells in the blood. It's amazing. And it sends a life throughout the body. The blood flows through. The heart pumps it, but the blood flows throughout our body and keep, maintains life. The blood of Jesus is so much more powerful than our earthly blood. And again, we're a body. The body of Jesus Christ. 
Because inside Jesus Christ's body was both flesh and God. I read this this and and this is something that I just I just liked and I'm going to share it and pray about it. I read this once and I liked it. If Jesus Christ's blood flows through our veins because we are a new creation in him, 2 Corinthians 5:17. And of his body, Romans 12, 3 through 5, then we are protected from the attacks of the enemy because Satan is called Baal Zeb. Now this is the Old Testament one found in where was it? Second Kings one twelve. This is not Beelzebub. There's different meanings. This is B A A L space Z E B U B. Beelzebub. Which one of its meaning is Lord of the Fly. Flies are attracted to death. The enemy is only attracted to death. Things uh, attracted to dead things. So when we're covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, the enemy flees because we're new life. We're life in Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray about that. Jesus Christ was sacrificed at the time of the feast of the Passover. That's no coincidence. This was um, just like in Exodus 12, 3. We read how the lamb's blood applied on the doorpost protected the children of Israel from death. This was their instruction. The lamb's blood put it on the doorpost. And obedience is a key fact, too, to being covered. This was a foreshadow, just like the, the tabernacle. In Hebrew, it talks about the tabernacle. The makings of the tabernacle was a foreshadow. Things prior, prior that shattering what's going to come. This was a foreshadow of what Jesus Christ shed blood and the giving of his life would do. Jesus Christ is called the Passover lamb. The Passover lamb. The protection, the blood, his blood protects. And he's also called the Lamb of God in John 1 29 and 36, and the Passover Lamb in 1 Corinthians 5 7. So many people argue and say, That's not, that's not. Why is he called the Passover Lamb? He's a sacrificial lamb, but the Lord specifically said, had it written in here, Passover Lamb. It also talks about we are covered or sprinkled. By the blood of Jesus Christ, 1 Peter 1, 2, Hebrews 12, 24. When I plead the blood of Jesus, I'm bringing up the attention to Father God. Hey, I'm pleading the blood of Jesus, that covering. I am petitioning for you to help me. The blood protects the body, inside the body. The blood is protection in many ways inside our body. And since the Lord is referencing us as a body, Jesus Christ as a head, his blood does more than just saves. Jesus Christ's blood also paid our debt. Hebrews 9.28 Meaning he was the substitute. The sacrifice. We all when we're born into this world. Come with a death sentence. We're guilty. We're in a sin nature body. Because of the transgression. The sin that Adam and Eve committed. When Eve took that first bite. And then shared it with Adam. He had a choice. And sin entered the world. We're made out of dust. The ground was cursed. Sin is the curse. Galatians 3.13 tells us that Jesus Christ broke the curse. We can now have eternal life in Him. So many people want to... I don't need to say that. Let me change that. It's not that we're wielding the blood of Jesus as some kind of... The blood of Jesus is precious, but it's part of Jesus. Jesus' name, Jesus in his glorified earthly God body that's been glorified. He's the word of God. All these things... Are Jesus Christ and all these things together make up how he protects us how he leads us how he guides us how he identifies us how father God sees us he sees us through that blood so that he can look on us you know now he can look down on sin he can or he would not be able to judge or look but sin will separate 
sin will separate, he will turn. He will turn. And for you to come boldly into his presence, it took the blood of Jesus Christ. Not just the shedding of the blood, it took also his life being given. Because if it had just been the simple fact of shedding the blood, which is not simple, but even in the days old, they could have just cut part of the animal and drained some of the blood out. It took shedding the blood and giving that life. Everything Jesus Christ did, shed his blood, was beaten, was whipped, lived in this world so that he could become the perfect high priest so he would be able to know our anguish our sorrow our joy our peace so he would know how we as humans were trying to could fellowship with father god in this form and had the holy spirit be baptized in the holy spirit so holy spirit could experience all this and so he could be the perfect comforter but yet he was a power inside of jesus christ it was after he was baptized that his ministry took off in the, the miracles, in the works. But they're all one mind, working in unity in one cord. So what I'm saying is, don't be so preset in your preconceived ideas of what we always taught. I read a book once about the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell my, my experience also. Do you want me to? Okay. In this book I was reading, it, it, it was a history also about in, in mentioning a revival. And they would just pray the blood of Jesus and people would get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because the power is in Jesus, His blood, Jesus Christ. But it, it was a story about an evangelist and his wife. And, and they were... Trying to let this person know that there's power in the blood of Jesus Christ also, not just his name. And they're driving down the road. The guy, they've been traveling for a while apparently. I don't remember the full story, so please forgive me. Don't get it 100% correct. But he was laying in the back. He was sleeping. And all of a sudden, I think they said a car swerved at them. And the, and it was these old timey, it, this was an older book. Because it was a... Uh, the scripture reminded me of like a, a Model T Ford. You know how the big wheels and, and the shaking. And, and they swerved. And they started saying, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. The car, the man woke up and the car just got picked up and put to the side. Whether you believe that or not. But that stuck with me. My own personal experience. There's two times when I was little. That I had demons come into the room. And both times I was paralyzed with fear. One time, I don't remember which order right now, I have prayed to, to bring it all back clear. One time I was able to get out and whisper the name of Jesus and it left. Jesus Christ, Jesus. The other time, all I could do was plead the blood of Jesus. But it made it freeze. It froze. It was advancing. And you're terrified. And I was young. I, one was around about the time that I had saw my first vision of hell. So that's around 11, 12. Holy Spirit, help me remember this exactly, because I don't want to mistell anybody. I was in the bed. My sister was in the bed with me. She was already asleep. And I woke up. And I was terrified, paralyzed. I could not move. And I knew there was evil in the room. I saw a shadowy figure. The shadowy figure had, had looked like glowing eyes for lack of better words but it is mainly a shadowy figure and I was terrified but I had been taught by my mom and growing up say the name of Jesus Christ or plead the blood of Jesus I was always told plead the blood of Jesus over you and that was told to me to do because the church we came out of they did cast out demons and they said plead the blood of Jesus over you so that demon does not come in because a demon when it's cast out will look for another place if it cannot go back into the person it's cast out of so they would say plead the blood of Jesus over you so that you are protected I did but this worked this is my own personal experience the demon froze and I'm in my mind going to plead the blood of Jesus plead the blood of Jesus and then I was able to with more authority say Jesus and it left I'm a kid 
So you can't tell me that pleading the blood of Jesus doesn't work. And that's appealing to Father God to step in. I am a child of God. I'm covered in this blood. I'm petitioning for you to help. Send me some help. Because the blood of Jesus is our defense. And Jesus Christ is our advocate. We can stand before Father God when we do our petitions. And he sees that blood. Blood covered. Ransomed. Redeemed. One of mine. And I know many people preach against this. I'm just telling you from my own experience. But when I questioned the Lord, because after growing up, that's what I was taught. And I was being told by so many people, you don't plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is not to be used that way. So I sat down into praying. And the Lord led me to the verses about sprinkling. And he led me to study what real human blood does. And through that I learned how it protects mildly the body, filters out things, poisons, and keeps you healthy, protects you in so many ways. Pray about it. Take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. I love you all. I'm standing in prayer in Jesus Christ's name for all I can. For those of you who have chosen to make yourself my enemy, enemies of God, I forgive you. You're not fighting me. You're fighting Father God. Just like and Jesus Christ. Just like every child of God. You are not fighting us. You're fighting against the one that redeemed us. And he has absolute say. So. God bless. Stay under the blood of Jesus Christ. Pray for one another. Pray for one another. Never quit reaching for the lost. And never let it bother you. If you've done everything you've been told to do. And they walk away. Don't let condemnation set in. Keep walking. They've either rejected the Lord. Or you've done your part and somebody else will come in. And take care of the rest. If you have done your part and somebody refuses what you said somebody walks away never underestimate the value of that seed that's been planted our God does the impossible if you've been obedient that's all he asks of you don't beat yourself up because, or, may, or think that you failed because what I have learned you cannot reach everyone that kind of crosses your path. You cannot. But just make sure if you're led by the Holy Spirit, you reach those you're called to reach. And that's just by being obedient. You may never know you reach them or not, but you be obedient. And don't beat yourself up unless you feel convicted, not condemnation. And you missed it. You missed your opportunity. Then you, what I usually do, I'm, I'm guilty. I'm not 100% perfect. I never will be. I'm the least of the least is how I feel. But I always pray, Lord, I feel like I missed it. If I have, please give me another chance or send someone else to ensure they get that opportunity of whatever needs to be witnessed about. If it was salvation, healing, please send someone to fill in the gap if I'm no longer able to do it. In Jesus Christ's name. And then go on. You can't. You can't let yourself. Become worried. Worried or anxious. We're not supposed to worry. We're supposed to be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. It says in one translation. We're supposed to depend on Jesus Christ. And trust him for everything. And not worry. When we start to worry. Then we need to go and lay it at his feet. And don't pick it up again. When we're done praying. All right, I'm being told to wrap it up. I have to ask this, though. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now's the time. Jesus Christ is a love like no other. He will stand beside you and the whole world will walk away. He is faithful till the end. Deuteronomy 7, 9 says, God is 
is a faithful God who keepeth covenant and mercy to a thousand generations. That's to those that are His. His mercy is everlasting to those that are His. He does not have to extend mercy to the unsaved. He does not. Please say this prayer with me. Jesus Christ, I ask you to come into my heart. Change my life. I ask you to come wash me clean with your precious blood and forgive me of all my sins. I confess here now you are the Son of God who came to this earth by virgin birth, a miracle in itself. But you were also God and man. And that you gave your life freely and you rose again victorious, conquering all. I confess you here now as my Lord, my Savior. And I also accept your sweet Holy Spirit baptizing in my life. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right, hallelujah. I recommend you get you a, a Bible, a hard copy. I have the KJV, but I recommend you pray about which translation. And ask Holy Spirit, he's your teacher. Simply say something like, Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ's name. Which translation? What people do I need to be around? Where do I go? And the reason I'm referring you to Holy Spirit, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit saved, reborn, because it's still a saving work and process. When you get reborn, when you are covered in the blood of Jesus, sprinkled, and you accepted him as your Lord and Savior, Holy Spirit comes in also. And he will teach you and lead you to the truth of Jesus Christ. That's why I, I'm, I don't push any one translation, even though I prefer the KJV. It's because whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to, He's going to teach you from the original, which is Jesus Christ. Now understand this. When you start speaking truth, when you start speaking things that people don't want to hear, that shakes their world in ways that they don't want and makes them uncomfortable, people are going to walk away. For those of you speaking truth, understand that. Let them go. All right, this is a My Lovely Jesus Ministry. If you have a prayer request, request you can submit that on the My Lovely Jesus uh, Ministry Telegram page. That is where I do read and I do check things out. There's also a place to warn of coming things. I don't know if I actually told everybody this or not, but it's a place to where if we get warning of the three days of darkness, People can start posting pictures or whatever, whatever needs to be done. And the reason I'm saying is because some areas, I don't know how the internet's going to be. We need to reach what we can when we can. But the Lord said to open it up. And it will remain open unless some of the things that's happened before continue. And then at that time, it will be shut down and reopened when, it, when the Lord says, when these things are starting to happen. But inside this, we have seen many prayers answered. And that's the main thing it's for. Prayer requests. Pray ye one for another. A safe place to be. Occasionally, the Lord will let down the hedge. We have something pop up. But you know what? The name of Jesus Christ takes care of that real quick. And that's not just for me. It's my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. I am not in this telegram 24-7. I spend most of my time praying and reading, but I have to check it at times when the Holy Spirit said, please, I do check it at least once daily for the prayer request, unless I'm told otherwise not to. Sometimes more than that. But I, I follow His leading. All right. I've said enough. Please take this dream to Jesus Christ in prayer. Please take everything I've said to Him in prayer. Try and test and discern it. Line it up as we're told to do. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 says, Prove all things. Prove, test, try. And we need to do that as a child of God because that will keep you from being deceived. You know His voice, but you have these other things. If you're having difficulty hearing His voice, you have these other ways. And even people inside can feel. But you test that too. Is this you, Holy Spirit? Try, test everything. We're in the time of great delusion. 
Second Thessalonians 2.11, which means veils and veils and veils upon veils of deception. God has allowed, sent them strong delusion that they would believe a lie. That doesn't go for his children. Those that's truly seeking our bride ready. Pray about that. God bless. See you later.